So, dear students, we are now going to start uh, on a new topic that is ternary phase diagrams. Normally, uh, we are very, very comfortable with binary phase diagrams because they are two dimensional plots of temperature versus composition, but ternaries are not, they are three dimensional plots. So, but we I will make you uh, you know understand how to read this the three dimensional diagrams. But before that, let me just give you an introduction to these ternary phase diagrams. As you know, ternary phase diagrams are very important. Why? As you as I told you, the glass, which is a very classic material, a very useful material, they consist of minimum three components like window glass, they have silicon dioxide, calcium oxide, and sodium oxide as a glass. In fact, if you look back history, glass was discovered by uh, you know by the uh, ship who which was by the ship, ship bus, a mariners uh, uh, long back on the coast of West Indies. While cooking food, they, they were using burning the actually the, the, the sand on the beaches of the Caribbean Sea. And when they are doing it, they found that at the end of the cooking, they found that something has fused and form a transparent thing. And that fusing thing is basically glass and that is how the glass came into the, into the history of the human civilization. And it is very important, we need to have a glasses, transparent things to see across the windows of the cars, across the windows of different other things. So, glass compositions are basically ternary. And therefore, we need to understand how this phase forms a ternary phase diagrams. Second important material we use industrially is refractories. You know, all these furnaces or ladles or crucibles, they have a refractory liner or lining to protect the liquid metal or very high temperature solid from losing it, also to handle the metals very easily. So, the refractories are actually of ternary or the quaternary component. Refractories are silicon dioxide, magnesium dioxide, or they can be other oxide like aluminum oxide, or they can be any other oxide. So, but mostly they are of ternary components, so ternary uh, three components systems. Then you have many aluminum alloys, metallic system like aluminum alloys. I let me just give you aluminum copper silicon, it is a classical alloy. This is the three components is aluminum, copper and silicon. In fact, to a specific aluminum, copper, silicon has a ternary eutectic system. The eutectic is between alpha aluminum, a silicon and L 2 C U is basically forms a ternary eutectic and that is one of my uh, you know favorite subject which I will discuss in the lecture. So, there are many aluminum alloys there, not only aluminum, copper, silicon, aluminum, nickel, uh, you know iron aluminum, copper, uh, iron, aluminum, aluminum, copper, nickel, there are many such systems basis. There are another important alloy system which is ternary is stainless steel. I have already told you that I am going to discuss about stainless steel in ternary phase diagrams. So, stainless steel consisting of iron, chromium and nickel as a majority elements. So, uh, carbon is present obviously this is steel, but a very low concentration. So, you know that stainless steel is a actually ternary system. Four, fifth one is a solder material. You know, many of most of the solders are actually ternary or quaternary, unlike the lead tin solders. And you know, lead tin solders actually uh, industrially will be phased out because of the poisons, poisonous component like lead. And uh, in 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 future, they will be completely, you know, use will be completely restricted. So, we are going to have, we, we will have a new solder alloys and they are mostly uh, you know uh, ternary alloy systems like tin, bismuth, zinc, this one such alloy system, there are many others. Similarly, there are many other applications, these are only a tip of the iceberg I am telling about it. There are many other applications where ternary alloy system is used like tungsten carbide, nickel and iron based system. Tungsten carbide is a ceramic system, ceramic component, nickel and iron is a metallic component, but three together forms a ternary system and this is used in the cutting tool industry. Tungsten carbide, cobalt and nickel. Okay. So, there are many such industrially useful material which forms ternary system. 
So, because these are the ternary system uh, ternary alloy systems, so it is imperative for us to discuss the phase evolution the you know ternary phase diagram how to construct them, how to read them, what are the information we can get out of the phase diagrams this is important that is what I said about 2025 lectures I am going to spend on this phase, phase diagram itself. Two uh, three important books the first one is uh, I told you already is very important by Alan Prince alloy phase equilibria. Uh, it is Elsevier publishing company it has a large uh, almost half of the book is on ternary phase diagrams. Then there is a book which is mostly not easily available by Rhines is on phase diagram metallurgy macro hills and uh, it is also uh, tell you detail about ternary phase diagram. And the Indian uh, author Professor S. P. Gupta who is also from IIT Kanpur his book is a big one but easily available cheap is couple of 4 to 500 rupees only it has a large chapter on the ternary phase diagrams. So, one can follow any of these books to understand that. So, I know why uh, uh, what are these ternary phase diagrams because I am going to start with from very basic diagram that represent the equilibrium between various phases that are formed between three components as, as a function of temperature is called is known as ternary phase diagrams. In binaries we have seen what we have seen that binary phase diagram is nothing but a temperature versus composition why because there are two components A and B and if I know one of the composition or composition easily known by this relationship where X and XP are the mole fractions of A and B respectively. So, this is a two dimensional plot between temperature and the composition and one of the things other composition is obtained that is so that is because there is only one independent composition variable that is why two dimensional plot is enough and we do it at a constant atmospheric pressure one at the EM that is the advantage. Now, in a ternary because there are three components A B C correct and this relationship do hold A plus X A plus X P plus X C is equal to 1. So, you have one independent two independent variables and one dependent because if I suppose I write x equal to 1 minus x p x c right. So, x p x c are known then a x is automatically known. So, there are two composition variables x p and x c and temperature variables and pressure is constant. So, therefore, there it will be not no longer we can use a two dimensional plot we have to go for higher dimensional plots. So, that is the difference. So, ternary phase diagram is a representation of equilibrium of various phases between three components. Well, Gibbs phase rule do gets applied here this is basically the fundamental rule as you know F is equal to C minus P plus 2 for a system where pressure and temperature both are not constant both are varying. But if for isobaric system where pressure is at one atmospheric pressure C uh, you have only one that is F is equal to C minus P plus 1. Now, for a ternary system your maximum number of component is 3 right because number of component is 3 a binary of 2. So, if C is 3 then maximum number of phases which will coexist is 4 because F is equal to 3 plus 1 minus P. So, 4 minus p and minimum value of p is possible is 0 therefore, p is equal to 4. So, therefore, there are actually 4 phase equilibria possible. In binary we have seen 3 phase equilibria right eutectic, peritectic, monotectic, eutectoid, monotectoid, peritectoid, but here we can have 4 phases at equilibrium possible. So, that means what your phase number of phases present in equilibrium is more that is the difference between a binary and ternary. Well, I will tell you also the moment I talk about ternary phase diagrams most of the time I will bring analogy with the binaries. So, therefore, I hope you have understood the binary phase diagrams very thoroughly and then only I will not say then only, but it will your, your uh, understanding of ternary will be very good the moment you know binary phase diagrams fairly well. But you know this there will be a lot of correlation between these two. So, this is the first important application of the things. Now, there are few important items to be known before actually I show you a ternary phase diagram. So, the end of this lecture first one is overall composition number of phases 
chemical composition of individual phases, amount of each phases and soil diffusion. So, these are things we like to know from the phase diagram or like to read out of phase diagrams. Obviously, soil diffusion sequence is very important that is what we have been doing for all the phase diagrams and here I am not going to do for do anything, I will not do actually for solid state transformations, but I will mostly talk about liquid to solid transformations in the in a turnate phase diagrams. So, you need to know the number of phases present, chemical composition of each phases, amount of each phases and solidification sequence. So, you know how do we express the compositions? In a binary we express composition by weight percent, atom percent basis or mole fraction basis. So, the sum of the concentration will be either 100 percent or 1. If it is present represented in terms of weight percent or atom percentage then it will be 100 x a plus b plus c will be 100. If it is represented by fraction like x a equal to fraction x b equal to fraction x equal to fraction then total addition x a plus x b plus x c will be 1. And we use not a line, but a triangle gives isolateral triangles equilateral triangles for composition. And this is nothing but equilateral triangle in which pure components are represented by each corner. Okay, let me just tell you. This is what is the composition representation of ternary phase diagrams. As you know, there are three components A, B, and C. So, how to do that? For a two component system, I draw a line, right? You draw a line A and B or B and C or C and A. That is what you do. So, B increases in the direction, C increases in the direction, A increases in the direction. Now, what I do? I join them, these lines, and form an equilateral triangle. I will explain you why equilateral triangle. So, if you first try to understand this is the best way of representing the compositions in a ternary system. So, three corners are B rich end, pure B end, pure C end, pure A end. Now, on this line from B to A, we always represent binary compositions of A and B. Try to understand very clearly. On this line from B to A, I we represent compositions of binaries correct. Similarly, from B to C represent composition of binary B and C, C to A binary C and A that is the way things is things are done. So, what will happen? Each corner tells you 100 percent B, 100 percent C, 100 percent A. This side tell you A and B mixture, this side tells you P and C mixture, this side tells you C and A mixture. So, any point lying on this will not have any A, will have only B and C. Any point lying on this will have no B, only C and A. Any point lying on this line will have only B and A, nothing else. Try to understand this very carefully. So, thus anything sitting inside the triangle will represent a ternary alloy composition. Like suppose this point or this point or this point or this point or this point, they are all the three elements all the three components A and B and C will present. So, if I want to represent pure A, pure B, pure C, I will only go to the corners of the triangle. If I represent want to represent A and B suppose A 20 percent B 80 percent, then what will happen? I will go on A B side of the triangle. Similarly, B C and similarly C A, but if I want to represent an alloy with A B C all are present like A 20 percent C 40 percent and B 40 percent, then I have to go look for a point inside the triangle not on the sides not on the corners. I am reiterating these facts again and again because this is the mistake students always do and one has to understand that. What is the advantage of A over K? That is you know then I can actually divide this triangle like here I have drawn parallel lines with respect to B C 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, that means, so at whole height I divide into 10 lines each one is a 10 percent, 10 percent, 10 percent, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 correct. Similarly, I divide this way parallel to A B 
compositions parallel to BC, parallel to AC also. Correct. So now you know I have that means what I have drawn lines parallel to BC. So as if I go in the height direction from BC this way, if I go this way, so each of these lines are telling me percentage of A, percentage of A 10 percent, percentage of A 10, 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 because this is 100 percent A. Similarly, if I draw parallel lines with respect to AC, I will come to know composition of B, 10 percent B, 20 percent B, 30 percent B, 40 percent, 30 percent, 50 percent up to, I am sorry, 10 percent B, 20 percent B, 30 percent, 40 percent, 50 percent, 60 percent, 70, 80, 90, 100. And same way this way, this is 90 percent, 80 percent, 70 percent, 60 percent, 50 percent, 40 percent, 30 percent, 20 percent, 10 percent and 0 percent because A B will have no C. So, you get a cross grid right. So, suppose this point if I want to know the composition of this point I draw line parallel to A C, parallel to B C, parallel to C A. So, if you draw parallel to A, A C I see this contains about 20 per 10 percent of A, 10 percent of A is it not this is a 10 percent line. And then if I draw a parallel line respect to A B that will tell me C C will be how much 10, 10, 20, 30 percent C. So, 10 percent this is 10 percent A, 30 percent B, 30 percent C and B will be how much to get B I have to look at line parallel to A C. So, this will be how much you see this is 10 percent B, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60 percent. So, 60 plus 30 plus 10 is 900. So, I can measure composition on anything. Suppose let me do another point because this is what is very important. Okay. So, suppose I consider this one. So, this point is what? This point, if I want to know composition for A, I just look at this parallel line with respect to BC. So, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So, this, this contains 50 percent A. Then I look at parallel to AC. Or will B composition 10 and 20 you see this is 10 percent B 20 percent 20 percent. Then I look at composition lines parallel to A B that will tell me C composition 10 20 30. So, you see 50 plus 70 plus 30 is 100. So, I can actually measure any compositions that is the way you should measure compositions because composition is very important you have to do vertical lines of the particular composition just like a binary. So, binary size is very easy I do a vertical line this is my x b 0 I know the composition of the alloy. Here this is what is how this how I measure. So, in a ternary grip triangle normally we divide it much much finer grid each 1 percent the composition has to be reflected. So, there will be 100 lines parallel to a b parallel to a c parallel to b c and this looks like a clumsy, but anyway it, you know in the exams you will use such a kind of grids to make to put out the compositions to know the solidification pathways to understand various other issues. To tell you much easily uh, this is how the things are this is suppose this is little bit changed I have rotated this triangle this is A this is B this is C 100 percent. So, you can see here C increase this way 10 20 30 40 50 up to 100 A increase this way 10 to 100 and B increase this way 10 to 100. So, I can represent any point for composition of the alloy. So, there are uh, you know many ways of representing compositions let us not look at it ok. Let us see it here the one I told you is this way there is another way of doing so. See this is the one I told you that I draw lines parallel to A B A C B C. So, these are the two lines we have drawn parallel to one is with A B that will tell me C compositions and the one is parallel to A C which will be B compositions. So, if I know C and B I know the A automatically I do not need to measure it from the from the grip triangle. Other way of doing thing is to put a vert normal ok. You see here that you can actually it you can actually drop normal from these and this one next time yes. You can actually suppose this is point P ok I know to know compositions. So, I put a normal which will hit here P 1 which will hit over P 2 P 3. 
then ratios of these will tell me the compositions ok. P P 1 divided by P P 2 divided by P P 3. So, P P 1 is to P P 2 is to P P 3 is P P 1 is uh, you know this is A is to uh, P P 2 will be B is to C that is also possible and this is one of the beauty of the bisolateral triangle uh, the equilateral triangles the normals actually will tell you the heights of the of these points that is the important aspect of equilateral. this will only happen in equilateral triangles will not take place in any other triangle geometrically. So, geometrically this is what uh, this is how actually compositions are done and I told you that how it is to be measured. So, uh, uh, okay, this are all there many ways you can measure compositions yeah and this is another way ratio that is why I told you let us do that. Suppose I put a point x on the on inside the triangle and you know I do not know the composition. So, what I do I just put a normal from x to the a c and extend this to the p o b this is a normal here and then extend it correct. So, compositions of uh, b because this is hitting the b end the normal which is dropped from these is means extended to the b end. So, b will be measured by n x divided by n b correct you see here this is the n x divided by total n b just like a lever rule. Similarly, if I want to know a so I have to go to side which does not have any a b c is a side there is no a point a symbol. So, I drop a vertical line which is x m or m x. So, and then I connect it to a pure a end. So, this x m divided by you know m a total length of the side is tell me the a percentage a similarly c. So, this is the ratio. So, there are two ways of comp determining composition one is drawing the parallel line with respect to a b a c or b c other one is determining the composition by drawing this or taking the ratios. So, these are the most widely used there are, there are other ways, but these are the two ways you can measure the compositions. You can use any of these ways to measure the compositions. So, in a nutshell uh, before I end this lecture as you know measuring composition in ternary phase diagram is not as simple as a binary in a binary you can simply uh, you know try to get a vertical line and x p can be obtained and once you know x p you can know x c in a ternary that is not the way composition represented by a triangle equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle will have three corners A, B, C. A will depend 100 percent A, B, 100 percent B, C will have depend 100 percent C. And the sides will represent A, B will represent the A, B composition, B, C will represent B, C composition, C, A will represent C, A composition. So, each of the sides are actually binaries equivalent to binaries A, B binary, B, C binary, C, A binary. Anything inside the triangle will tell you the ternary compositions. And there are two ways of making ternary composition. One is by doing uh, parallel lines to this point on which I know to know the compositions other one is dropping normal to the uh, sides of the triangle from the point for which I want to measure the compositions and using this lever rule to do that the three ways of measuring the uh, two ways of measuring compositions. So, the next class actually I am going to discuss about uh, you know tri lines tri triangles and uh, many other things, but we will move very slowly so that you understand the